the next move for the Pac-12 seems to be very unknown. So what, well, what does come next for the Conference of Champions? We'll discuss with Richie Bradshaw, host of Locked On Arizona State Sun Devils. Let's go. Our Locked On Pac-12, your daily podcast on the Pac-12 Conference. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Locked On Pac-12. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin, D1 play-by-play broadcaster. Thanks for making this your first listen or your first view of the day. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your number one source to stay up to date with the Conference of Champions, you know, as long as it actually exists every day. Like, comment, subscribe, wherever you're listening to or watching the show. I appreciate everybody out there who has already done so. The YouTube number has been absolutely soaring. Podcast numbers have had the best month ever in the history of the show, so thank all of you for making that possible, and I thank Richie Bradshaw for making an appearance possible today. He is the host of Locked On Arizona State, and I'm trying to get anybody and everybody's input who has a, a consistent run of opinions going on the Pac-12 conference. And, uh, you know, Richie, when I first messaged you about, hey, do you want to come on the show? I don't think either of us really needed to ask the other, what do you want to talk about? 100%. Nope. It was it was one of those, it, it almost felt inevitable. Like, I was like, I feel like Spencer's going to message me within the next couple of days here. And that's exactly what happened. You were like, do you want to go, do you want to go today? I was like, yeah, I would love to go to today. Like I just, there, there's so much to talk about with this. There, yeah. It, it really doesn't stop. We were talking about this before we started recording. Like once you, you know, explore one potential avenue or angle to, to cover this story, which is just so earth shattering, another one emerges and you think about this, you think about that. What about this school? What about that school? What about all of these schools? And, and we should put out right now. Uh, I'm, I'm on vacation, technically speaking ish. Uh, <laughs> I'm in, uh, in Edmonds, Washington right now at, at my parents' house. This is Thursday's episode. We are recording on Tuesday. So if stuff has changed, Maybe it maybe it has changed. Uh, broadly speaking, you know, it's still going to be applicable. But I mean, this stuff can just move so fast. So just wanted to to throw that out there. But uh, Richie, let's get into it. Haven't talked to you about this yet. So w- when you first saw the news that USC and UCLA would leave, and you know, all all the other news stories and headlines and rumors and speculation, everything came out. But when w- it it's been it's been a whirlwind. It's been an absolute whirlwind. What was your first reaction when you saw that uh, the L.A. schools were bolting for the Big Ten come 2024? It just felt like it happened so quickly. Like, it felt like there was a rumor that was spread for, you know, not even a week that that the Big Ten had been in talks with US, USC and UCLA. And then, like, like I said, like not even a week later, it's just boom, they're gone. They're they're off to the Big Ten. Uh, bigger and better things, unfortunately, you know, the self-proclaimed. Uh, Conference of Champions in the Pac-12 has just been on the downswing for a while. It's felt like a two or three team conference for the last five to six years. And unfortunately, it just felt like the conferences in general are starting to create an arms race. With, With the SEC adding Oklahoma and Texas, it felt inevitable that the Big Ten was going to make moves. Maybe the ACC is going to make moves. Uh, The Big 12 just added four teams, including Cincinnati, who was just in the playoffs. So it feels like the Pac-12 was kind of on the outside looking in and was going to start getting poached. And that's already the start. You know, there's another rumor that the Big Ten's not done. They're looking at Notre Dame, but they also apparently are looking at Washington and Oregon. And if you lose those two teams, you go from the Pac-12 with a few notable names to the Pac-8 with, you know, Utah is the headliner, which we all love Utah here in the Pac-12, but unfortunately, they don't get the national love. They did just make the Rose Bowl, but it feels like regardless, they're not going to get that college football playoff push that in Oregon or USC, if they rebounded with uh, Lincoln Riley, was going to get. So right now, the Pac-12 is just in shambles, and not not to be a doomsday guy with my picket sign that says the end is nigh, but it feels like the Pac-12's demise is almost inevitable at this point. Yesterday on the show, I, I made a comparison, and we'll see how it lands amongst uh, USC fans. It might not be uh, totally well, but you know, with the way that USC has 
gone about all of this sort of stuff. Really not the way and more just the fact that they, they have undergone the conference change and, you know, they hired Lincoln Riley. They kind of went from the best hope that the Pac-12 conference had to revive itself to now a key orchestrator of of its potential ultimate demise. And it reminded me, I don't know if you're a Star Wars fan, but it reminded me of Anakin Skywalker, man. I mean, Obi-Wan is there. He's chopped his legs off of him. Now that's not exactly <laughs> comparable. Or whatnot, but he's yelling at him. You were the chosen one. one. <laughs> it was said that you would destroy the Sith, not join them, bring balance to the force, not leave it in darkness. And USC was going to be the program with Lincoln Riley that revived the Pac-12, that brought it back to being a more nationally relevant and respected conference. And now the complete opposite has happened. I mean, you went from, if you're just a generic Pac-12 fan, obviously everyone has their their, their school affiliations. You're an ASU guy, I'm an Oregon guy. Like everybody has a school they root for. But on the whole, we want the conference to be good. And so we just collectively went from, okay, it's kind of scary in some sense that USC is back. But also, there's a lot of upside here. And the upside probably outweighs the downside in the long run. And now there is no upside, right? To use another Star Wars quote from Rogue One. I promise I'll stop after this. But No, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> there's, I am, a pro- I am so it. <laughs> there's a problem on the horizon. There's no horizon. I mean, talk about what what Pac-12 fans have undergone from USC is going to bring us back to does the conference only have two years left to to even exist? No, 100%. It just, like I said, it it feels like an inevitable demise here. If, If they truly, if the Big Ten is not done and they poach Washington and Oregon from you, at that point, it is Utah and nothing else. I mean, that's great for Arizona State that all of a sudden you're like probably the second or third best team in the conference. But at the same time, it's it, it just speaks to how bad the conference is because Arizona State is so far behind the eight ball for what USC could become, for what UCLA had had been doing. I guess they're kind of in the same ballpark. What Utah is, what uh, Oregon is, it just... It it goes from like this this hierarchy of like three to four teams, and then such a such a jump down to the second tier, and now that's your second like your second tier becomes your first tier. It's Utah, and then pretty much the rest of the Pac-12. You're you truly are such an afterthought. Like may, maybe this is a bit too mean, but doesn't this feel like you're becoming the Big East, where like. <laughs> <laughs> Rutgers is your your premier program, Rutgers and Syracuse, and then the rest of the teams get plucked and boom, the Big East is gone. It feels like that's slowly becoming what's going to be the Pac-12. Is it's like, we got Utah. We don't got anything else, but we got yeah. Utah. You I... wish that Stanford could rebound. You really wish Stanford could rebound because there was a time when you had the Andrew Luck and Kevin Hogan era. It, David Shaw's prime, and now it's just... If you still had Stanford, first of all, they'd get plucked at this point. They'd probably, probably. get taken away from you. <laughs> yeah, it might. I I think that's just an unfortunate reality of the the entire situation here. You've mentioned the the Big Ten speculation. There's another big time conference that is being tied to the Pac-12, and that's the Big 12. We'll talk about that after we talk about Rock Auto. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever increasing numbers of makes and models, it is now M possible for your local chain auto parts store to have all the parts you need you can just save time and money when using rock auto a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years go explore their easy to use website today to find the solution to your auto part needs go to rockauto.com right now see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in there how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you amazing selection reliably low prices all the parts your car will ever need rockauto.com Okay, Richie, so the the Big Ten speculation is 
obvious, right? I mean, it's just a natural thing to ask. Well, if two Pac-12 schools are going there, does the Big Ten want to get more of them? Do they want to have a move kind of in a, a four-team pod so that they've got some you know, better travel proximity to some of their future Big Ten schools? You mentioned Maryland, or, or, or sorry, Rutgers earlier, but Maryland as well in the Big Ten. That's a future USC and UCLA conference foe, Rutgers. <laughs> to you, oh, which is man. which is a weird thing to be able to say. The Big Ten looked like it had some momentum for going to going for going for some schools, but now that seems to have, to have cooled off. At least as we're recording this on uh, on Tuesday night, the Big Twelve seems to be in in some pretty serious talks with Pac-12 schools as well. Just broadly speaking, before we narrow it down, we'll talk about Arizona State here in in a sec because I obviously want your thoughts there. What do you think about the potential of the Pac-12 and Big 12 kind of merging? I don't know if some schools would get left out in that mix, but you know the the idea of the conference merging to try to make a you know mega conference, if you will, to to at least from a numbers and somewhat caliber standpoint hold up against the SEC and and the Big Ten. Honestly, it feels like a dream come true for a program like Arizona State. Like that seems like the absolute best case scenario. It feels like we've heard for a little while now that the Pac-12 and the Big 12 have been in conversations for a merger to create, like you said, this mega conference where you would have, oh my goodness, they, they've got probably 14 teams after they just added who they have. Even if you only add four teams from the Pac-12, I mean, that that jumps you all the way up to 18 teams. So it would it would be a best case scenario for Arizona State in in this in this sense, which we'll we'll talk about Arizona State in a second, but I'll, I'll go all all the teams that you can add. You go from you know we love hashtag Pac-12 After Dark, but no one is staying up to watch it. We're so, the only ones watching. Yep, exactly. Which is why we love the madness so much. But everyone on the East Coast is in bed, don't and care. no one can. Yeah, no one can blame them because we don't have any programs worth watching right now. You go to the Big 12, you get a better network deal, first of all, for a Pac-12 program that suffered so much under Larry Scott, who just could not get a good TV deal done. You're going to be broadcast more. It's going to help you with recruiting and everything for your programs like Arizona State, which should have no issue uh, recruiting considering you're in, in the Arizona and uh, Southern California is not that far away from you. Texas isn't that far away from you. You're one of the biggest colleges in the entire country. You should be able to recruit, but neither here nor there. Overall, it it feels like that's a best case scenario for the Pac-12 would be to have this merger where it, it helps your TV deals. It helps your players to get more national spotlight. It could help recruiting to get you in a best case scenario. And then you're in a conference with some good teams. You have uh, Baylor just won the conference and Oklahoma State was right there with them too. The unfortunate thing is you did just lose Oklahoma and Texas, but it'd be it'd be for like the hundredth time. It, it it's a best case scenario for the Pac-12, and quite frankly, it'd be a really good move for the Big 12 too. The reason I see that as such a viable path forward is the, the Big Ten would not do a full-on merger like that. That wouldn't make any sense. They and they don't need that either. What they're looking for if they wanted to expand, would be a select couple of teams to come into their conference and bolster the the pedigree of the Big Ten brand. The reason the Big 12, Pac-12 makes sense, and I think you would see the Pac-12 go away and the the schools that are in the Conference of Champions right now would go to, and by the way, the problem with being called a Conference of Champions is when you are literally that in every sport except football and men's basketball, it causes a few problems when you're talking about conference pedigree and and credibility and whatnot from fans and recruits. But that's somewhat of a different conversation. But the reason I think that makes sense is because the Big 12 and the Pac-12 have a similar problem in that their biggest revenue drivers from a TV standpoint and though Oregon has been much better than both USC and UCLA over the last few years, it still doesn't compare to the the amount of fans who are watching, right? The amount of fans who are watching not just USC and UCLA games, but who, who are watching Oregon games, who are watching Stanford games, who are what, like all that sort of stuff contributes to the ratings that you get for your games, and that feeds back to the revenue that then later comes into the conferences. And so the Big 12 and Pac-12 have that similar issue that they're trying to solve. The Big 12 is in a better place in doing it. 
But if you wanted to make, you know, I mean, it would be a massive conference if you added uh, the report I saw from Dennis Dodd of CBS Sports uh, as we're recording this here on Tuesday night was that they're lo- they were looking at six schools from the Pac-12, the Arizona schools, Oregon, Washington, and then uh, Colorado and Utah as well, which would probably be the ones I would go for if I were going to choose six of the remaining 10 to bring over to uh, the Big 12 conference. I agree with you on the kickoff times and the network TV deals like that would all certainly be an upgrade. But the reason that merger, I think, makes sense is because you're trying to find not just, you know, programs to fill the places of the ones who have departed your conference if you're the Big 12, but you, you want to have good teams as well. I mean, you didn't lose anybody. You lost Texas and Oklahoma. Now, Texas has been down, but Texas has also brought you some really good moments, right? They brought you the Big 12's last national championship. They lot, they brought you the Big 12's last national championship game appearance. Lincoln Riley at Oklahoma, like that was a big time deal. So you're trying to replace that. And though you might be going for the quantity over quality directly, I think it's the best option that that you have going forward, right? Like I, I just see from a, from a conference pedigree standpoint, the, the point I'm trying to make here, from a conference pedigree perspective, merging with the Pac-12 or adding a bunch of Pac-12 schools, I think helps the Big 12 get closer to where it was from a conference strength and a strength of schedule, you know, point of view that, that you had before with Oklahoma and Texas. Do you think that, do you, do you, I, I see that as being the primary reason why Big 12, Pac-12 makes a lot of sense here. What do you think? No, 100%. I mean, it's just, it's one of those things where you you really lost so much, even with just those two teams. I mean, you, you lost the teams that generated the Red River rivalry. That is a massive blow that the Big 12 takes. If yeah. you get those six teams that you mentioned, though, for what it's worth, that's the best teams that you have left available, short of, you know, Colorado, <laughs> but... You know, from, from a location standpoint, it makes sense to pull Colorado. Like it, everything is kind of in that area besides the yeah. organ of the world. But plus, plus, plus they get paired with Utah as a travel partner if that ends up working out. Exactly. So you, you it just it, it makes a lot of sense for the Big 12 to be making these moves because like I, I'm definitely a person who's quality over quantity. But quite frankly, when you lose Oklahoma and Texas, the more shots you have at that dartboard, the better. Because you do have a potential of Utah to continue being great and for Oregon to continue being great. And maybe Arizona State can turn things around. Maybe U of A's uh, really good recruiting class can turn itself around as well. I mean, the more the more shots at the dartboard you have right now after losing your two biggest programs is definitely in your best interest. But they also made some really good moves with Cincinnati coming in. They were just in the playoff. UCF, the self-proclaimed national champions a couple years ago when they were undefeated. Uh, Houston is a very good program with Dana Holgerson there. And, oh my goodness, who was the other team they added? BYU. Thank you, BYU. And they're, they're a very good program. I was on the I was on the table saying that Arizona State should have, or not Arizona State, the, uh, the Pac-12 should have gone for BYU. So, if you're able to add the four teams you just added, which are all, for what it's worth, very good ads, and then you're able to get six more teams from the Pac-12, that would be huge for viewership. It would be huge for um, just fans in general. It'd be it'd be really, really good in, in, and in the best interest of everybody. So Pac-12 should definitely look to do that, and the Big 12 should absolutely be making those phone calls to bring in those teams right now. It's starting to get a little bit uh, messy and convoluted out there, but sometimes messy can be a good thing. Like maybe your built bar gets uh, just a a tiny bit melty or so. Uh, If you haven't tried the amazing coconut brownie chunk built bar, you'll love that. But you know what you might love even more? How about the brownie coconut chunk Puff. Yeah, they've got it all. They're giving at the full treatment, pun intended, of course. That's right. The coconut brownie chunk built bar flavor you love in a deliciously chewy marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. It's like a fluffy cloud of coconut brownie goodness. I don't know what I'm missing here. The answer is nothing, except I haven't ordered them yet, which you can 
as well to get your delicious coconut rich sweet brownie and creamy marshmallow flavors all fused together in one go to built.com use promo code lock 15 and get 15 percent off your order that is promo code lock 15 for 15 percent off at built.com so richie you host locked on sun devils talking about asu if you want a daily content on uh the pac-12's current well at least for the time being pac-12's team in tempe but we'll see how long the conference is actually going to last year what do you think is the best path forward for arizona state and i mean th- there is still the possibility i think it's more likely than not the pac-12 ends up seeing its teams go elsewhere and in a few years we are talking about what used to be the pac-12 conference and the amazing you know 13 year run it had in in its existence and such, and then the other teams might be spread out elsewhere. I, I see that as very likely. But it's impossible to predict this stuff. And you have to be prepared for every scenario because you just don't know. I mean, there's so many things that have to go right. Even if you think the Big 12, Pac-12 merger idea, you think that's a great idea. A lot of people think that's a great idea. There's only about 5,000 details that have to be coordinated and figured out and agreed upon amongst about a couple hundred people to make this stuff happen. So it's not as if you just flip a switch like, oh, yeah, you just do it. You just you just merge the two conferences together. Like, no, that stuff takes a lot of work. And I bring that up to say, what if the Pac-12 continues to exist and maybe they add a couple schools? I threw out San Diego State and I think Boise would be potentially uh, an option. You could go UNLV to try to get the Vegas market, but their sports have been really down. But like there there are avenues in the Mountain West specifically where the Pac-12 could potentially go. But for Arizona State specifically, what do you think is the next best step? Would you rather see them move on and go to the Big 12? Or do you think that, you know, a path for them to competing for a conference championship, even if it's a little lighter without USC and UCLA there in uh, in your path, do you think it would be for them to stay in the PAC conference, whatever it would be called at, at the time, and, you know, contend with whoever is left, assuming Oregon, Washington, Utah, and those sorts of schools st- stick around? Dude, it's so funny. So on what's going to end up being my Wednesday edition of the pod, I am going to point out the three scenarios for Arizona State. The first one being doing everything you can to join the Big Ten. It's not going to happen. Joining the Big 12 is another. But the third option would be to stay in the Pac-12 and see the Pac-12 expand. And it's funny, all the schools you just mentioned are schools that I'm going to highlight. Is San Diego State has been a very quality program the last few years. Uh, Boise State has the history from the last, like, 15 to 20 years uh, during the Chris Peterson eras and stuff like that. They're still writing on their, on their past success, but it'd still be a good ad for what it's worth. UNLV and Nevada could also be options, but if you were to stay in the PAC 12 and the, the PAC conference, like, like you said, whatever it ends up being, if they are able to, you know, add teams to sustain itself, even for just a little bit longer, it would be a good option for Arizona State because you would have a more clear path to winning the Pac-12. And for what it's worth, in case everyone has forgotten, the Pac-12 has eliminated divisions. It is now the top two teams will compete for the conference championship. So that's really going to help Arizona State's chances, especially if like Oregon leaves. There's a very good chance that you are the second best team in that conference, which puts you in that in that conversation every year to win the Pac-12, you win the Pac-12, boom, you go to the Rose Bowl. And Lord knows that is the pinnacle of the Pac-12 is getting to Pasadena to play in the Rose Bowl. It's something I want to see before before my day's end, which hopefully is a long, long time because it feels like it's going to take a long, long time for Arizona State to get there. But it, it, it improves your chances to compete for a Rose Bowl, compete for a Pac-12 championship, which unfortunately maybe doesn't have the notoriety to get into the college football playoff anymore. But it really, really would, if if the Pac-12 continues to exist, this would be a best case scenario to compete for a championship. If you were interested in viewership and TV partnerships, then your best case scenario is the Big 12. So it really just kind of depends which part of the fork in the road you're more interested in. Are you more interested in the money aspect and you want to join the Big 12 where there's a chance you just kind of get 
washed away with the rest of the competition and you're kind of sitting where you're at now, or are you interested in staying in the Pac-12, which is going to be a significantly weaker conference where at least you can make a name for yourself? It really just kind of depends where, you know, Ray Anderson wants to go with it. And for what it's worth, there's two conflicting reports. There was a report out there that Arizona State is one of four teams that is meeting with the Big 12, the other three being U of A, Colorado, and Utah. But then there's also a report that came out on Tuesday that Ray Anderson said that the team and the university, I should say, is committed to the Pac-12. So I, I, I don't know what to believe. There's a lot of time between now and 2024 and 2030 or whenever you might potentially leave the conference. I think I think ultimately a big decision maker is going to come down to is the Pac-12 going to be able to get a TV deal? Because former commissioner Larry Scott, like I mentioned earlier, just completely fumbled the bag every single year and was not able to get something done when DirecTV was in its prime. You did not have a Pac-12 channel with DirecTV. And that really, really hurt you. I it just it really depends what 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 path you want to choose right now. So I, I don't know. I feel like those are the two most realistic options. The Big Ten's not bringing you in. So it's it's between the Big 12 and if the Pac-12 can sustain itself, would you be interested in staying? The Rose Bowl is a fascinating conversation because if mm-hmm. USC and UCLA leave, they UCLA plays at the Rose you see, Yeah, UCLA plays at the Rose Bowl, but the Rose Bowl committee... And I, I'm not clear on, you know, what the contracts are and whether or not that's, you know, a yearly thing that they renew or whether or not it's, you know, there's a 12 year deal that they're in year eight of, uh, you know, about it being between the Pac-12 winner, formerly Pac-10 and the Big Ten winner, you know, barring college football playoff appearances and, and such. And I just wonder if, you know, Oregon and if Oregon and Washington do stick around. And like and nobody else leaves. I think the Rose Bowl committee, for tradition's sake, would have enough to where they they would still want to have it be between the Big Ten and the Pac-12. But it, it just feels like if anybody else bolts, and you know if the conference were to stay alive, which seems like less than a 50-50 proposition at this point, kind of feels like 60-40 at least that it's not going to. But I don't I don't rule it out entirely. Uh, because a lot of things can change. But there could come a point in time if the Pac-12 were to become weak enough but still exist where the Rose Bowl committee might look at it and say, yeah, this is not the sort of conference that we want to put up in, in in this game. And they're their own entity, right? The the Rose Bowl, you know, the people who put on that that entire production, that's that's their decision, and they work stuff out with uh, with the conferences and have that in place. Kind of seems like if uh, if you do want to see ASU get to the Rose Bowl, they might need to just do it in the next two years while you still have 12 teams and we still know the conference exists and we still know that it's going to be an automatic berth into uh, the granddaddy of them all down in, in Pasadena. But uh, an ever-evolving situation, and uh, again, just... Just in case something drastic changes between now and when this episode drops, uh, we're recording this Tuesday night. This is Thursday's episode. That's Richie Bradshaw. He hosts Locked On Sun Devils at RichieBrads36 on Twitter. And uh, we will continue to hear from him and others and all the fallout that has been uh, raining from the sky like cloudy with a chance of meatballs on uh, <laughs> on, on Pac-12 fans. I think that's enough pop culture references for today. Thanks for coming on, Richie. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. If I can sneak one more in there, though, when you had mentioned Fire. when you had mentioned Arizona State trying to get in the Rose Bowl within the two years, the first thing that popped in my head, taken, and just the guy on the phone, good luck. <laughs> that that's how it feels. <laughs> Arizona State, like I will make it to the Rose Bowl, and like everyone else is like, okay. Arizona oh, State. I, oh yeah, Ev, everybody would. You could also go Morgan Freeman in the Dark Knight when, um, yes, <laughs> when yeah, when Coleman Reese is coming to blackmail him. 
And he says, and you know, he lays out the whole thing of like, you think your, your client plan? is Batman and your plan is to blackmail him. To blackmail him? Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good, exactly. Good, good, good luck. They'll, they'll certainly need it. Appreciate it. I appreciate everybody listening or watching. Like, comment, subscribe, wherever you are doing so right now. I will see you next time and have a wonderful rest of your day.